That was a good one, Mike. <laughs> it's a traffic jam between the uh, between the dining room and the office. <laughs> and Sean's here. We have a we have a full board attendance. Okay, that being the case, it's the evening of March 24th at seven o'clock. I will call the meeting of the Bellingham Conservation Commission to order and uh, person with the Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposes strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. No in-person attendance. Members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely as this meeting will be accessible to the public via the Zoom op online option. Uh, information uh, on attending is available at the town website. Further, moving forward in this meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to withhold access to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and respectfully request such access. All right. And Laurie is here, I see her. Yep, there she is. Okay, the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw on the request for determination of applicability for the proposal to install an above ground pool within the 100 foot buffer zone for building vegetated wetlands located at the census map parcel 44 120. Putting 29 Pudding Stone Lane, Bellingham, filed by Lori Gleason of the same address. The meeting will be held online via the Zoom option on Wednesday, March 24th at 7 p.m. Okay, Lori. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us, Lori? Okay, you, you'll have to un, unmute. Can you? There yes, sorry about that. No problem. Takes a little getting used to. <laughs> so, Laurie, you're proposing to put in an above ground pool uh, right in your backyard. Do you have the ability to, do you have the, the plan that you submitted with the filing? Do you have that available? I do not have it with me right now, but I can send it to you. Oh, that's okay. What we'll do is, are there any commissioners? that uh, are currently available to pick that up off of their Dropbox and we can share the screen and then Lori can walk us through it. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. Uh, bear with us. And this is simply a, a, a GIS map. It's not really specific to where there is. It's not an engineer plan. No, it is not. But we didn't feel that it was necessary considering the fact that the pool will be built up against the deck and there'll be a significant amount of grass between them and the resource area. So it's in the backyard. Don't, don't be throwing any shade on GIS maps, okay? No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. I didn't want to tread on anyone's territory. <laughs> he didn't plan to do that, Neil, you know. Uh, oh. Is it in the RDA document? It is. It is. Okay. Oh, baby. And it's part of the RDA. It was included in the actual RDA itself. Okay. I have it open. Beautiful. Okay. Let's see. I think, I think Jim's going to let you share your screen. <laughs> Maybe. He's smiling. <laughs> ah. Is that what we need to see? Can you see it? Uh, 29, yes, yep. that is it. That's okay. It. So, there's not a whole lot of information there, but I'll let Lori explain, um, you know, what they want to do. And, you know, we, we can provide a little assistance after that. Okay, thank you. So my house is up on the top of the lot. There is an incline down um, towards the river. So the pool would be placed up against the deck that's attached to the house on the higher part of the property. And like you said earlier, there is a significant amount of grass in between the, the buffer zone and 
where the pool is going. Okay, so for clarification, uh, the house is located right around the number 29? Correct. Okay, and there is uh, an existing deck and right off the deck um, to the south is a flower bed and they're going to give up a couple of 30 year old rose bushes and they're going to put the pool right in that flower bed is that is that about right it's um i don't know how old the rose bushes are okay <laughs> they're old <laughs> they're big oh, okay I, I, I don't know, but the plan is to relocate them with another section of rose bushes that are in the yard over near my shed and then uh -huh. put the pool in that section. Yes. Okay. That's a good idea. It's a, be a bloom and shame to get rid of them. Yeah, no, I, they're gorgeous roses. There's pink and red. So I have no plans to do that. I just want to relocate them. So the administrator, uh, and the chair uh, inspected the site. Um, we, we found it to be, you know, a, the most basic of filings, but because Lori was in the buffer zone, the administrator uh, requested her to file the paperwork to make it legit. And um, it's as easy a filing as, as we, we would normally get. Um, are there any, anybody have any questions or comments? Even though it's above ground, Mr. Commissioner, would we want to put something in the order with conditions just stating that uh, okay. some sort of siltation protection in case they're clearing the ground? And I know you have to do a little bit of grading and leveling for it even above ground, just so they, you know, get a big rainstorm then, since it is a downward slope, you don't get a washout. So Lori, um, can you tell us, I think we had, um, I had asked you previously about how long it would take them to install the pool and how they would do it. Can you tell the board, uh, I think you talked about bringing in some sand to level it off. Um, so what they do is they call it pool sand. It's a type of sand that they put under. It's protective for the pool in particular. Um, the, the land is fairly level there, so they wouldn't really have to do much, but you know, on, on some end of it, they may put a little bit more sand than the, the other side. And how long does it take them to install the pool? Sorry about that. Um, they said within, uh, they would only be here a day, so it would be you know, a few hours, not anything long. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And based on what we saw in the field, there will be less than a foot of pool sand required. So, um, you know, if they're going to put the pool sand in and then drop the pool right on top of it, I, I don't even think they need sediment erosion control. I mean, obviously, yeah. uh, we could we could we could say something like, well. You don't want to be installing this in a rainstorm, but I don't think they're going to want to do that anyway. Yeah, I think they would reschedule me at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I just thought I'd ask in case it was a prolonged project, but it looks like they're going to dive right in, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other questions? Comments? Right. That being the case, I will entertain a motion to issue a negative determination. No. So moved. Discussion? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, okay. So we have, that was Sean and I think Noel. Uh, that was Arianne. Oh, Arianne, sorry. Arianne. sorry. Uh, is there any discussion? All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's by unanimous So, vote. Lori, what this means, and maybe the chairman can tell you what this no, means. <laughs> Please. Um, so, a negative determination um, simply states that the board has determined that you certainly are in an area 
or the work that you're proposing, um, depending on how you filed, um, is in an area that's jurisdictional to us, but we do not feel that you have to move forward with an actual another filing a full notice of intent uh, in order to permit the pool. Um, so that's what that negative determination means. Uh, so it right. basically is an approval for you to move forward on it. And we will get this negative determination out to you after we have it signed. Probably, um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can make arrangements this Saturday. So perhaps by early next week, uh, you will have that signed determination. And I understand that you have a building permit in front of inspectional services. And uh, as soon as we get this thing issued, I'll be very happy to, uh, to sign off on that building permit for you. So you can move Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me thank you for your, um, thank you for uh, all of your efforts with this. I know it's difficult for um, small homeowners to uh, have to, you know, move forward on doing these kinds of things, but um, we, we take our resource areas uh, very seriously and we try to hold everyone to the same standards and um, I appreciate your call to your cooperation. Thank you. Yeah. She will. Okay. Yeah. So I'll mail that permit to you if that's all okay. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome and good luck with your pool. So thank you so much everyone. Going to be right in time. All right. Yeah. So enjoy. <laughs> Go on swimmingly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Should I stay on or drop off or? Oh no! Well, you can stay on if you want, but uh, your your portion of the meeting has We're been done. concluded. We're done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're free to go. Night, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Um. So. There's, a, there's a, a couple of other items that uh, we're going to ask. First of all, let's see, how many people are available to sign on Saturday morning? We're not out in the field again. Okay, I see. Oh, okay, we have enough people to make it legal. Okay, so who are those people? So. Uh, Noel, Neil, uh, Sean, uh, and Brian. Oh, excellent. Now, I can't see Ariane if she's raising her hand or not. But. <laughs> I don't think I can make it on Saturday. I can come either Saturday or Thursday, not okay. Friday, but either of those two other days. Fine, just let me know if you want to come so I can make sure that I'm... The uh, paperwork's prepared. Yeah. There's a couple other things we have to, um, uh, we have to sign. And one of them is uh, one that I'm going to um, bring up right now. It's an extension request from the Department of Public Works for the Hartford Avenue intersection and reconstruction. This is uh, over by the Medway line. Um, you know, obviously the criteria for granting extensions <clears throat> um, gives us a little bit of leeway. Um, the DPW, it, it's are coordinating with the town of Medway to get this intersection done. We were hoping it would have been done a year ago, but it looks like now the, the funding is available. We're going to be putting it out to bid. So the DPW is requesting an extension. And, and Don is really all over this. You know, he's, he's requesting the extension uh, four months in advance. So there can be no mistake that it's timely. And, and if I can just add to that. Um, and, and from what I understand, um, the bid uh, should be in very soon, and he's hoping to get this work started soon. Uh, the issue is that the, um, the order of conditions is going to expire um, before they finish the work. So we just wanted to get a, a, a jump on it and ask for an extension now so that they can have clear sailing and he doesn't have to be worried about that. So... That being the case, I'll entertain a motion um, to act on and sign the extension request for the Department of Public Works. So moved. <clears throat> second with a question. Well, you can second it and then we'll say discussion. I'm just seconding and letting you know I have a question. <laughs> okay. um, how long is the extension for <clears throat> that he's requesting? He's, he's actually only needs up till December, but I think in order to give him a little bit of comfort zone, 
Well, we agreed to a two-year extension. Two? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I wasn't, okay. sure, I wasn't sure if he wanted a three-year, and I asked him, and he said he really believes it'll be done by December. And I said, why don't we just give you a two-year? And he was happy with that. Just to make sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. So we have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. By unanimous vote. Um, before the next hearing, we have a couple of minutes. Um, we have uh, minutes for two meetings, uh, February 24th and March 10th. Has everyone had an opportunity to peruse the minutes? By the way, this will get us up to date. Great. <laughs> oh my gosh. I do have one question on the 10th. So the other one looked fine to me, but I have a question on the 10th. Yep. Okay. Uh, so probably I'm jumping ahead. REM might want to say it, but looks like on page three, we had the two hearings about <clears throat> the North Main Street, Mill Street, Common Street. And then right after that was the Mechanic Street, Mill Street projects. Um, in the first one, it was mentioned that Aria and, uh, had recu recused herself from the hearing. The second one didn't, although I think she said it both times. I don't know if you need to say that. It does say she had a no vote both times. So I guess it really is sort of a moot point. But no, it's not. Right. No, no, it's because not. a no vote is a vote. So you know, we're going to ask um, no vote, meaning not voting no, but meaning unavailable to vote. So I'm going to ask Amy to clarify that a little bit. Because she had recruited. Will do. That sounds good. Okay. So, so probably in the same section right below representative um, for the continued public hearing right at the bottom of page three there, you probably ought to stick that same line we had before just to be clear that she, that Ariane recused herself from the second hearing as well. Yeah, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, one other, go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Another question about the, can't find a hearing on a second. Uh, facility conditions. Um, it's a question about the fifth page, fifth page, I think it was the one on, Oh no, the, uh, sorry, the last page, uh, page seven, where we had the uh, informational discussion about the Riverfront project and the pictures were shown and so forth. <clears throat> In the last paragraph before the adjourn on the minutes there, uh, about halfway along the paragraph, the commission felt that as abandoned dumping grounds directly followed junkyards and the regulations. I think you just want a comma, comma there, not a new sentence. The intent was more related to solid waste rather than spoil piles. Otherwise, the sentence just sort of came to an abrupt stop. And uh, commission felt that quote, no, abandoned. felt that as abandoned dumping grounds, which is the actual quote from the law, Direct. directly followed quote junkyards, which is also in a the quote from the law in the regulations. Oh, so it's a dangling sentence. Sort of, I guess. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, but just a comma there would probably do it, right? A dangling comma. modifier. I got it. <laughs> okay, cool. You modified the modification. Thank you very much. Uh, that was all I got. Um, everything else looked great to me. Thank you, Amy. As always. I had um, just a few things on the 10th as well. Okay. Um, the second hearing on page two for Candlelight and Silver Lake. Okay. Um, applicant um, looks like just a small spelling mistake. The V instead of C for center reality. Oh, okay. um, and then for page four. Why am I not seeing that? Page two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, got it. Yep. Yep. South Venter Realty. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, and then page four, let's see. Oh, it's actually page five in the paragraph um, describing 455 Hartford Ave. Mm -hmm. Two lines above where we referenced 
L for the L-shaped building. Um, we reference that, or reference in, in the far back of the property. I don't know if we should refer to that as the Eastern part of the property or not. I don't know how specific we need to get. The L-shaped building was shown, the parking lot and entrance were shown, the four bay and detention area were- Now you're gonna go before the L, mm -hmm. two, sec two sentences before the L cliff. Okay, the development and resource areas were shown on the screen. There's an isolated vegetative wetland to the south of the site in the far back of the property. Uh, oh, there was an abandoned right. railroad bed and some morning vegetative wetlands that's in the bank of the Charles River. That's so in the far back of the property is, is technically, Amy, it's south of the isolated vegetative wetland. I think if we say that, that'll clarify it. Got it. Noel, is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. And then we reference um, same paragraph mm -hmm. closer to the bottom. We reference stormwater standards, um, but we don't reference the actual section. But I also wasn't sure the um, actual section of regulations to correct it with. Actually, it's not in the regulations. It's in the uh, it's in the stormwater uh, stormwater structure design handbook. Okay. I don't think that it's necessary because new information uh, that the administrator got today is that they're going to be redesigning the basins to remove them from the 50 feet. Okay. No, it was a good catch. Yes. Normally we, we, we do that kind of thing. Uh, but I think in this situation, we're going to be okay. Good. All right. And that was my last uh, correction. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, in that case, I will entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from February 24th and the meeting minutes from March 10th as amended. So moved. Second. Amy. You can have it, Mike. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 A unanimous vote. Excellent. All right. We'll proceed to the next hearing. <clears throat> the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw, on the notice of intent for earthwork, landscaping, and stormwater management facilities within the 100 foot and 50 foot buffer zone associated with the construction of a multi family residential development entitled Hartford Village 2, located at the Sussex Map. 23 parcel 666 Street, Bellingham. Drew Rovan, uh, Andrew Survey and Engineering, Menden Street, Oxford Test submitted the filing on behalf of KS Realty Trust, 1 Stalbrook Road, Milford. The hearing will be held uh, online via Zoom on Wednesday, March 24th at 7 20. Good evening. Uh, my name is Byron Andrews. I'm with Andrew Survey and Engineering. Uh, Unfortunately, Jude can't be with us tonight. Um, he actually met with a skiing accident this weekend. Oh, no. And uh, right. he's, uh, well, he's in the hospital. He, he I guess he got uh, banged up pretty good. Uh, his, he broke an arm and I guess broke his leg in several places, but uh, oh, my goodness. yeah. Wow. Not good. Yeah, I was That's talking good. to him this afternoon though and, and he's, yeah, he's, he's on the mend. I'm sure he'd rather be here than there. <laughs> I'm sure he would. <laughs> okay, Byron, um, so you're up. Okay, um, so um, the, the uh, commission's probably familiar with the project. Um, the, uh, there was a condo development there and um, in the course of developing phase two, the, uh, de the detention basin was installed. Um, the um, the um, request for the certificate of compliance came a little late and uh, unfortunately it was uh, uh, the uh, order of conditions had expired at that point. Um, also, there were a few slight variances from the design of the basin um, as you normally you know, might find during construction. Um, but we have analyzed the uh, basin. It does uh, meet the stormwater uh, standards and functions, uh, performs all the functions that uh, it's designed to. 
Um, so we're just asking that the board prepare another order of conditions so that uh, we can uh, apply for a certificate of compliance. Okay, um, Barbara, can, can, you, uh, can you put the plan up for the commission to seek and Jim, would you allow him to share his screen, please? Um, I, uh, you'll have to give me a minute to bring it up. Unfortunately, I had trouble getting into the meeting tonight. So uh, it's just gonna take me a minute here to... Um, well, one, one of the commissioners might be able to pull it up for you if that would be faster. No, Noelle is, uh, she's, she's, ready. <laughs> she's ready. She's got her Dropbox open, so maybe she okay. can. You can provide the narrative. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. So, uh, so the stormwater basin is in the lower right hand of the picture. Um, the, uh, <coughs> the basin uh, was installed. This is an as-built survey of it. Um, basically, we're act act asking for a notice of intent um, and using the as-built plan. There will be no changes at this point. Um, the basin uh, functions adequately, has enough volume. Uh, the peak ru uh, runoff is uh, within standards and lower than um, before the, uh, for the development. Um, the, uh, uh, there were recently a few additions put in the basin to uh, help its function. There was a perforated pipe there in the center line of it, uh, help with uh, infiltration. The uh, basin functions both as a uh, infiltration and a retention basin. Some of it is infiltrated um, as it sits in the basin and the rest is uh, discharged over time. Noel, could you go a little more on that, please? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it now. Yeah, it's here. Uh, Okay, so one of the things, uh, well, first of all, let me just preface um, uh, the commission's comments by saying, um, as we always do when there's a change to a permitted uh, stormwater management structure, we send it out for peer review. It should be pretty much a pro forma type review, just to um, you know verify that your calculations are correct and that the function, the basin will function. Um, in accordance with the performance standards. But I, I noticed when, when the, we were conducting our review, you've got a retaining wall uh, at the base elevation of the uh, basin. Um, that uh, that uh, wall actually is, uh, it's not at the uh, bottom of the basin, it's uh, elevated above the basin. Um, we don't have any grade uh, markings on that uh, on that uh, structure, but it is, it is elevated a foot or two above that to retain the, the, the water um, in the left-hand side. And, um, and part of it will infiltrate um, through the six inch perforated pipe at the bottom of the, of the wall. And some of it will uh, um, percolate through the wall to reach the other side of the basin and, uh, and discharge from there. And so, uh, maybe I missed it, but are there details for that wall? Uh, we don't have a detail for that wall. Um, there may be a detail in the um, in the um, uh, in the uh, permit set uh, permit plans um, was built to uh, was built um, to that specification. I don't. I don't recall that being in the permit set, Byron. Uh, are you sure it was included? Um, well, unfortunately, I don't have the permit set in front of me. I have what I have the uh, drainage plan uh, from it. Let me see if it shows. Um, it does show on the uh, permit set. Um, the orientation is a little different, um, but I uh, I don't see an actual detail for it. I can't show you the. 
Again, I was hoping it get set up a little earlier so I'd be able to screen share it, but I can show you this. Uh, this is the detention basin. You can see this now. This is the detention basin from the permit set, and this is that area shown on the permit set. Which and, sheet um, is that, Byron? Which sheet is that? Uh, this is sheet. I can't see anything on that tiny screen. That's that's. Uh, I'm just. Curious. That's useless. No, but we have it up. Well, Noel's got it up, so we should be able to find that. So that's sheet C seven. Okay. I have um, an original set here, um, and I'm looking on sheet C7. I don't see the wall in the basin. This is the original plan. It was the original set that you're talking about, right? From yeah, the uh, permit set uh, dated um, April 4th, 2016, revised July 5th, 2017. Right. What am I missing? Why we, do I not see it? We don't see a wall in there. There's no wall on ours. And there's no detail. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to go out for a peer review. But in order to save a little time, thank you. Uh, in order to save a little time, I know that one of the things the peer reviewer would, uh, would require is that you show the grading and you show the detail for the wall. Mm -hmm. So if we can get that done, um, what we'll do We've already spoken to uh, the, our administrators already spoken to uh, the peer reviewer um, and, and submitted him uh, the pertinent information. So we're going to be awaiting uh, a scope and then we'll get that to the applicant. Uh, and then, you know, we can just proceed. Okay. And we can add uh, some details about, uh, about the, um, that uh, stone barrier there at the bottom of the basin with the elevations at the top of it and uh, at the base of it. That'd be really helpful. Okay. And um, I, I just want to make, make mention here that the reason that we have this filing to begin with is because modifications were made to the design during construction um, and the applicant never came forward to the Conservation Commission when they had their active order of conditions. Um, so when you came for a certificate of compliance, we saw enough of a change that would have probably warranted at least an amendment. Um, and the reason that we do this, Byron, is so that when we have these, these projects completed, we have what is out there on site, um, mm -hmm. not something that has been modified. So uh, we appreciate you uh, sending in this um, new notice of intent so that we can get this addressed and get the proper design on file for this project. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, I did see our building inspector here earlier. I don't know if he had a comment relative to this or if this was just an informational gathering exercise for him. But if Tim is still around. Okay. Um, um, Noel, I, I think, thank you very much. I think you can probably close that now. Thanks, so, Noel. So um, I see Tim is there. Tim, did you have any questions or comments uh, relative to this or you're okay? Uh, no, not really. Um, so if it's gonna go for peer review, that's fine. Just the uh, dressing the other side, I think the leach field does need to be um, loomed and seeded this, this spring. That, that's what we were waiting for, I guess. Okay, so what happened was this whole thing was precipitated by um, by request for certificate of compliance. And once we took a look at the basin and we realized that that wasn't what was permitted, we, re we required the applicant to file a new notice of intent so that we could address any issues that we might have with the change in the basin. Um, along with the certificate of compliance request, you know, the certificate of compliance was for the whole project and the whole project was filed in its entirety, irrespective of the fact that certain areas are not jurisdictional to the commission. The project description uh, allows us to make sure that all activities that are, are necessary will be taken. 
And so in order for us to issue a certificate of compliance, Tim, we're going to require that that area be loam seeded and stabilized. For goodness sake, what we don't want to have is a massive septic system having erosion and then be breached from the outside because a simple stuff like stabilizing the slopes wasn't taken. That doesn't work for anyone. No, it doesn't work for anybody at all. <laughs> so I think that moving forward, you know, this is just like a heads up that this is something that um, the commission will be requiring. And I mean, as we just heard, I'm sure the inspectional services are, are, are looking for this as well. So spring is coming. It's a good time to do it. Um, well, that, that, that was, that was the whole idea Cliff. So um, that, that, um, butts right up to Hickson Street. So this, I mean, now's the perfect time to get it stabilized and everything because when the rains come, it's just gonna overwhelm that silt fence that was there and it's gonna be out on the street again. Yeah, we don't want that. So, okay, Byron, I think that's, I think you've got a couple of tasks to complete. We, uh, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chairman, I'd, uh, as part of the filing, I'd like to see a side-by-side -side comparison of the uh, as-built versus the originally uh, permitted structure, just for a visual aid for us, so that we we can we can see the differences right next to each other, please. Certainly, we'll we'll be providing document. Uh, we'll be signing documents on Saturday. We'll lay the the plans out, and people can look at them. I think that should have been done as part of the filing. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think it should be really be handled at a, a public hearing session. I agree with you, uh, Neil. Um, so maybe we can do that when when the peer reviewer submits his comments, and Byron addresses those comments. Because because I'm sure Byron, you have those um, that you could share with us. I believe yeah, absolutely. Was, that would yeah, be okay. great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. But thanks, Neil. Thanks. Mr. Vice Chairperson. <laughs> okay. Um, so once we get the scope, uh, shall I send it to you, uh, Byron? Um, yeah, wh uh, why don't you send it to me and uh, copy it to Jude? I'm not sure when he's going to be back in the office. Um, he said it could be as early as, as a week or two. Um, but um, in the interim, I can get the changes going on the plans and anything else that we need to do. Perfect. Thank you. Excuse me, Ann. Mm -hmm. Could you also CC me, please? Of course. This is Brad Wright, in case, in case I don't look the same in, in, in camera as I do in person. <laughs> None of us look as good as we do in person. I recognize your voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you would CC me on everything, please. Okay. So... I don't know if two weeks is going to be enough um, to accept the scope, um, have the review, submit peer review comments, and then have you guys um, comment on it. That would be the 14th. I'm wondering if it might not be better to do this on the 28th. Uh, I, 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 I would personally say, please, the 28th. No, nothing goes as quick as it we expect it to. Fair enough. That's awesome because that was going to be our suggestion. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. So that being the case, uh, I will entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of Wednesday, April 28th at 710. Um, okay. Second. Okay. Um, motion, a second, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Now, just for um, administrative processes, uh, the evening of the 28th, we have uh, the two Red Mill projects on. Uh, we have the, the connector road on at seven, and we have the, the housing development on at 7.05 because the applicant was uncertain whether or not they would be prepared. So our strategy here will open them up rather than give them an hour or more of time and then just have them request a continuation. 
We'll continue them to later in the meeting. I know it's not the kind of thing that we like to do. However, um, I think in order to provide everyone with ample opportunity, uh, this is the best way to do it. So, um, is there anything else? We're looking at a COVID record here. We already continued. We voted and we voted for that, right? Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Right, thank you. So thank um, you. if there's no other discussion or comment, well, what? What on the hearing? Well, that we had closed it. We closed the hearing. Okay. I mean, we could. For Saturday, are we meeting at nine? Thank you. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm like, ah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Saturday at nine would be great. Yes. Um, and also, MACC registrations are due. Tomorrow is the last day. Um, so get those in to me so that I can get them processed. Um, congratulations to Brian, Noel, and Ariane. You all were reappointed by the select board. Um, and so, <laughs> yes, we're very happy about that. <laughs> Brian has been, uh, Brian was sworn in already. So Noel and Ariane, if you could get a hold of our town clerk and make arrangements to get down there to get sworn in, that would be great. It would be great if we sure. could for our next meeting. Okay. okay. And I think. I swear you'll have a good time. I think that's it. <laughs> All right, a motion to adjourn. Hey, way too short a meeting. Oh, I guess. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, real briefly, has anybody else had trouble opening the documents from Dropbox? Oh. I did, but I've been having internet issues all day, so. Is it uh, I didn't... today, Sean? It's just been today for me. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I wasn't able to open any of the documents through Dropbox, so weird. Noel, have you been, uh, uh, Mike, have you been able to open them? Um, this time I didn't. I took Ann's two ones for the minutes. Um, but I can tell you that generally I don't have any problem opening it up. And actually, you mean, uh, Neil, are you talking about when you get actually in the Dropbox opening the files or getting to the Dropbox? No, I can get into the Dropbox. It's opening the, when I open the files, they won't, they won't open. No, I just I just did it real quickly for the. I tried a couple of browsers. I've tried a couple of different browsers and. Yeah, it opened up right. for me. Yeah, no, I just I just tried it real quick and opened up fine for the. Oh, actually, that was the February tenth one. I didn't try. You're gonna it. have to. You're gonna have to upgrade your ISP from xyz.com. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't appreciate. No, I know he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, I gotta man. get one in once in a while. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. <laughs> is, is there some other way? Would you like me to send them to you? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll I don't know. It's the work, I'll try it on the home computer. This is the work computer because it has the camera. So if you have, uh, continue to have problems, let's get this resolved. Because Okay, to... thank you. Okay. All right, so we'll see everybody, or we'll see many of you uh, for signatures on Saturday at nine. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Whoa. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right. you, Jim. Thank you, Amy. Shot. I know it's a shot. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Amy. Good night, everyone. Bye.